Hello students, welcome to Srinath. In this video, we are going to discuss the fourth chapter, which is basic geometrical ideas from CVC class 6 math. So, my name is Karthik Nune. We are creating uh, videos on all chapters and all subjects from class 6 to class 12 right on this channel, which is Srinath Academy. So, don't forget to subscribe this channel. Also, like and share our videos. Also, follow on Instagram and join our Telegram channel students. So, without wasting time, let's begin this video. So, what is our present chapter? That is basic geometrical idea. So, in this present chapter, we are going to discuss some topics that is the introduction to the basic geometrical ideas. And we are going to discuss about the points and we are going to discuss about the line segment and uh, what is a line. We are going to discuss about it and about intersecting lines, parallel lines and about the ray we are going to discuss and after that we are going to discuss about the curves and uh, next thing is in the uh, what are what are polygons and what are the uh, qualifications needed to become a polygon and what are angles we are going to discuss students so after that what we are going to discuss is that is about the triangles and quadrilaterals and finally about uh, circles so this is the whole chapter you are having in a cvc class 6 maths subject students so this is the whole chapter this whole chapter now we are going to discuss the uh, each topic and each concept and we will do some examples if there are any on this chapter students so that's it students our overview is completed so before we starting the chapter there is an introduction so basically the word geometry what it is geometry so it is an uh, english word which is equivalent to the greek word called geometron so geometron so it is derived from two words what is one is geo and another means metron so what is the meaning of geo means its meaning is earth and what is the meaning of metron its meaning is to measure so basically how geometry has evolved or how geometry has uh, has started its development in the olden days means basically to measure the lands to measure the land areas and boundaries uh, the to measure the earth or uh, to measure the land uh, that geometry is developed that is the starting stage of the geometry students okay and uh, in the ancient days if you look at some architectures uh, some art and some measurements so there are geometrical ideas or uh, there are several geometrical ideas that we see in the ancient days students so our ancestors our ancient humans have used so much of geometry students oh and uh, uh, for a construction of magnificent palaces temples lakes dams and cities art and architecture propped up these ideas so for these constructions of different different beautiful places and art and uh, like temples palaces and several geometry has developed and has you involved in its students so even though uh, today uh, we also use so many geometrical ideas and uh, geometrical shapes uh, with us students so basically so you observe and use different objects like boxes you will uh, use boxes tables books tiffin box uh, and lunch box and ball and you play with ball so all such objects have different shapes if you see all those such objects all are having different different shape strengths so the ruler which you see the pencil with you which you write us are straight so uh, the ruler is their ruler which is the scale so which is straight and the pencil or pen which is also straight student so the pictures of bangles are in circular shape and rupee coin is in circular shape so so basically seeing uh, different different objects we are having different different shapes to different different objects students. so here uh, here uh, you will learn some interesting facts that help you know more about shapes around you so in this present chapter we are going to know what are the different shapes around us so we are getting much knowledge on shape students so that's it students so this is the thing we are going to learn now so we will cast concentrate on points so what are points what are points suppose c take a uh, take your pencil take your pencil so th this is the pencil so this sharp edge if it is very sharp too sharp you will get a sharp edge students so uh, with using this pencil make a mark a dot on paper like this if the pencil is too sharp you will get much thinner dot so this dot we called as the point students what it is point students so 
if this dot is very very tiny and it is invisible you have to name uh, you have to give a name to that point so you have to give a name to that point so uh, by uh, for different dots you can name those dots which using letters like that is it is the a which means there is the point a here there is b which means it is the point b it is c so which is point c and somewhere it here so this is point d like that so we can so what are points we know the where is the smallest tiny point tiny dot we call it as the point and if it is the very thin and it is invisible you have to name it the name that point by using alphabet students so at the tip of a compass if you see observe the tip of the compass it is very very sharp so it will uh, it is a point and the sharpened end of a pencil if your pencil is very sharpened that end is a point and the point of pointed end of a needle if you take the needle its end is a point strength so a point determines a location so what point will do point will determine the location strengths okay and uh, if you mark three points on a paper you will be required to distinguish them so for this they are denoted with small single letters so if suppose if you draw three dots on a paper you so you have to distinguish between them so for that reason and to mark it we have to naming it with as like a b so this is point b so this is different from this is point so this is point b and this is point c so it is different from this this is just different from this like that friends so basically what we are uh, what we have learnt about point is point is use it to specify the location and we will uh, represent the point uh, or the, we will name the point by using some alphabets and point is the sharp point is the very very sh tiny thin tiny thin dot that we will represent uh, as the point straight so next thing is uh, we are going to learn about the line segment so what is line segment so we know what is a point so suppose take a paper take a paper and fold it if you take a paper like this suppose this is the paper and if you fold it like that if you fold, this is the paper so I, I assume this is a paper fold it so whenever you are folding it at the folding of this edge so at this edge there will be a uh, straight line there will be a line so in the in the given textbook so this is the paper whenever you are folding around around this so there will be this is the line we are folding around it so this we called as the line segment students what it is this we call as the line segments so otherwise uh, uh, otherwise take two threads or one thread like that under uh, make tighten that thread and that the tight and that area between the two hands is a line segment students otherwise uh, take two points take two points points that is point a this is name them point a and point e join the two points with a straight line so this way we call it as the line segment what it is this is line segment so this is the line segment so if you are folding it the ends of the uh, ends of the folded area or the folded line uh, we call it as the line segment strengths okay so that is about the line segment strengths okay so line segment is like that and dot is like that you have to remember it so suppose if you are having the box the edge of a box is a line segment so this is the line segment and if you are having the two blade so uh, edge of the two blade this is also a line segment okay suppose you are having postcode so this is a postcode suppose if you are having marriage invitation cards they are look like like that no so this edge is a line segment this edge is a line segment this is edge and the line segment this is also line segment suppose if you take the about the end points end points so these two end points we call as the points so the uh, endings ending points of a line segment we call as the points okay students so this is suppose from a to b draw different uh, different curves so what is the shortest between a distance or the shortest path from a to p that is the straight line from a to b so we call that the shortest distance between two points started shortest path between two points as the uh, line segment students which is the line segment between two points so basically line segment is between two points line segment is between two points between two points that we call as the line segment okay students so that is the we will represent suppose this is the point a and this is the point b 
so how we will represent the line segment line segment is represented as a b bar so like that we are going to represent the line segment students okay we will represent point by dot around it by in in your total number students that is our point uh, sorry line segment now we are going to discuss about line so what is the line so basically imagine that the line segment from a to b is extended beyond a suppose there is a line segment from a to b now students so this is the line segment so if you extend this line segment beyond b and beyond a then where it will goes so there is a arrow symbol if you ext if you goes on extending it will goes goes on goes and will goes as long as it was good so there will be no end for its uh, for its uh, uh, extension so we call that as the line students so uh now you now get a model of for a line so imagine that the line segment from a to b is extend beyond a in one direction and beyond b in another direction without any and you will get a new model of for a line so do you think you can draw a complete picture of line so can we draw the complete line we can't why because means it goes on extending 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 so we can't draw the complete picture of line it will always goes on extending so how can we represent it basically uh, representing it by arrows so this arrow shows that this line is line segment is not ending its boundaries are its end points are going as on increasing it there is no end for it it is goes on increasing increasing and increasing so that's why we are uh, that for that reason we are calling it as the uh, lines line strengths okay so basically uh, a line through two points is written as a b uh, if you want to represent the line through a b representation of of line between two points a and b how we will represent basically we represent by a b like these students so we will represent in short line as like this student so uh, between uh, so if we extend the line on both sides it will become say line students line segment so that is about line segment suppose if you observe the picture sometimes we will name the lines as with some names let us suppose if this is a, we can name as a l or m or n or anything which we want so we will name this line as line m students what it is it is a line m so it is passing through two points p and q so it is extending to uh, beyond q and it is extending beyond p so it is the line segment a uh, line which is which whose name is m like that students so that's it students we have completed completed our discussion about line also starting with intersecting lines so what are intersecting lines we know what are lines how we will represent lines lines suppose a b is there we will represent by letter uh by arrow heads on both sides on top students so we can name uh we can name we can give names to internal lines suppose we are giving it named as line, line named as l like that okay so we can name it as anything suppose clean uh, clearly observe the here there are two lines l and m so l1 and l2 are the two lines so both these are uh what happened both these lines have a common point both these lines passes through a common point p so we say that both the lines intersect at that common point p so both these lines here l1 and l2 are passing through passing through common point so both these are passing through a common point so what is that common point that common point is point p students okay point p so we call that common point as the intersecting point intersecting point and we call that line as the what we call we thought that lines as the intersecting lines what are those students intersecting lines so l1 and l2 are intersecting lines point p is intersecting point so whenever two lines are passing through one common point we say that both the lines are intersecting each other they are intersecting lines students okay in this example if you draw x an alphabet so there is a common point and these two lines are intersecting and if you see adjacent sides of your notebook 
so if you extend their uh, adjacent so, so this is your notebook if you extend this direction and if you extend this direction these two lines will, will pass to some common point so this is also a these are the intersecting lines so if you see the crossing roads are there no so uh, these roads also so this is the line and this is the line they are having some common points common point center we call it as the chaurus or center like that so that point we call it as the intersecting point and thus two roads are intersecting roads we call them as intersecting roads students so we have learned about intersecting lines now we are going to learn about parallel lines so what are parallel lines so suppose look at this uh, so this is figure look at this table so this is the table top end these are the uh, these are the four pillars of the table okay students now if you observe the top surface that surface is what it is it is a b c d this is very flat surface okay students so seeing this what we can say is a b and b c both are lines we can call if you extend this they will become lines so these lines lines a b and b c are intersecting lines why because they are passing through one common point b so these two are intersecting lines similarly uh, ad and ad and dc are also intersecting lines why because they are passing through this common point but if you observe if you observe ray or line sorry line ad and line bc so both these are uh, not passing to any common point both these are not common po common point so if you consider it lines or line segment whatever it may be it is not problem students so both these are not having any common point so we call these as the parallel lines parallel lines why because they are not intersecting they are not intersecting so these we call as the parallel lines students so you find on the table surface there are line segment which will not meet so however for far they are extended ad and bc from one such pair can you define one more such pair of lines on the top of the file so if you observe this ad and dc are one of the pair of the parallel lines and ad and bc is another pair of parallel lines so these two are the parallel lines students. so this is the one and this one so these like line segments are not intersecting at one point so these line segments are what we can call as they are the parallel line segments or if you even though if you are extending these line segments as a lines they will also not intersect at any point so we call those as the parallel lines we are extending the lines or extending the line segments it will becomes lines so lines which are not intersecting are called as the parallel lines so the distance between any two points the perpendicular distance between parallel lines is constant throughout six journey students okay that is about the parallel line students okay so which do not mute meet or which do not intersect are called as the parallel line students suppose for real life examples for parallel lines are take a scale ruler so this is one line and this is the another line so the whether these two are intersecting no so these are parallel lines and one more thing is uh, cross bars of window so these are also so these are this is one thing this is one thing these two are the also the lines so whether they are intersecting no so these are also parallel so suppose if you see the railway track so railway train rail is on two tracks no so the, all these two tracks are no whether they are intersecting no so these are parallel lines the distance between the parallel lines is constant towards the journey students so that's what you have to learn about parallel lines next thing is the about ray students so what is a ray suppose if from a uh, you will observe a light from a lighthouse and you will observe a light from torch and you will observe a light from sunrise we call those as the sunrise we call the path of the beam from a path of light from a torch and from the beam of light from torch so basically sunrise we call sun light as a sunrise why because means basically if you what is a line segment means if it is having two end points two end points then we call it as the line segment line segment and is represented as a b if if a if a line segment is extended between these two points a b a b 
so if it is an if it is having no end points no ending points if it is passing through two points and it is extending beyond that points we call that it as the line it is not having any end points end points so we represent it with a b bar then now what is array so for array it is having one end point one end point or one starting point or one beginning point or one starting point or one initial point and it will goes that end point is one initial point is a it will go passes through b and will goes on increasing its direction or anything so it will never ends it will goes as on like that only so then we call it as the lie ray so what is the ray means for a ray the initial point is fixed and the other point is goes on uh, other uh, other thing is goes on extending so we call it as the ray and we will represent it ray as the a b bar so we are having putting arrow head on one side only then we call it as the array if you are putting arrow side arrow mark on two sides it is a line there are no arrow heads then is a line segment friends okay so it starts at one point it goes on increasing to on another side friends okay so a ray is a portion of a line so it starts at one point so ray is nothing but it is a portion of line is a portion of line starts at one end starts it will start set one end and goes and endless and goes endless so it will goes on there will be no end uh, for the for this trend so this is the representation of ray so this is the starting point it will goes on like that so this is the ray but what is the line line is having the two points it is extending both sides is not not having starting point this is the a and this is the way it will goes on like that so this is the from this point to this point we are taking that is the relay and this point to this point we are not taking that is about ray students okay now name the rays given in this picture so what are the rays in this picture so ta is one ray so it is a starting point at this point it is goes on increasing its one end is initial end and it is final end is goes on increasing so from this figure what are the rays tb or tn tn and tb and nb uh, 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 sorry n along that tb ta is a, a ray and tb is also a ray tn is also ray students okay students so here oba it o to a it is also ray students so that is about ray students start with that curves so we will discuss about curves okay students so have you uh, have you uh, just see these images okay see these images so all these are curves what are those all these we call as curve students so uh, basically uh, in our normal assumption or in the normal context curves means they are curve curve means they are not straight line not in a straight line not in a straight line okay students not in in straight line but in the mathematics in the mathematics mathematics but in mathematics max math curves may be curves may be may have straight lines also straight lines also if you see here this is the straight line but we call this as the curve so line segment so like the students so in the mathematics there will be uh, there there may be there may be straight lines also we call those also as the curve students but in the general science curves means there is no straight line they are bending like that they are curved shapes like that then and only we call those as the curve or curves but in the mathematics we may uh, in mathematics uh, there may be there might be straight lines also straight lines also so oh, these are the examples of curves students okay so uh, how to draw a curve means simply you can draw any anything you can draw anything uh, always uh, without any having any proper uh, without having any proper notation or proper uh, qualifications or proper thing you can draw any curve so with with your hand with your pencil like that we call anything like that so all this becomes curves so without considering about anything we can draw curve strengths okay so without 
so without lifting the pencil first while we will drawing the uh, curve so if you want to draw the curve without lifting the pencil from the paper and without the use of ruler you can draw any curves okay students so that is so curve in everyday usage means not straight in everyday usage curve is not straight but in mathematics it may be straight students okay so simple curves here there is word called simple curves so which curves are simple curves means curves which do not cross each other curves which so if a curve does not cross itself if a curve if a curve does not cross itself then we call that as a simple curve suppose this is a simple curve so this is a simple curve okay students but what is the not simple curve means this is not simple curve why because this curve is crossing itself there is a cross this curve is crossing itself but here this curve is not crossing itself so this is not simple curve not a simple curve okay students this is these both are simple curves okay so now i will put you a example and not exam just a one minute quiz so in these figures which is not a simple curve i am asking you which is not a simple curve tell me so is this a simple curve yes it is a simple curve is this a simple curve yes it's to a simple curve is this a simple curve it's not a simple curve why because it is crossing itself it is crossing itself now so it is crossing itself now that's why it is not a simple curve students so what is the another uh, another uh, one in this diagram which is not a simple curve obviously this is not a simple curve why because means it is crossing here it is crossing here it is crossing now so the curves which do not curves if a curve does not cross itself then we call it as a uh, simple curve if a curve cross itself it is not a simple curve students okay so in the case of simple curve there are two curves one it is open curve and another thing is closed curve so which curve we call as the closed curve and which curve we call as the open curve so if the uh, if so this is a open curve why because it is not closed it has started it that at its point it has gone like that and it has ended itself so what is a simple curve example it is a simple curve so here it has started and here it has entered students so this is the example of uh, closed curve this is the example of open curve so there is an opening now that's why so simply uh, is this an open curve or a closed curve i am giving you two seconds of time just reveal the answer in the comment section one two yeah this is a open curve why because there is no closing to the curve so this is a open curve but this is this is a closed curve students okay so this is about open curve and uh, closed curve so this open curve and uh, closed curve are in the simple curve simple curve means which do not cross each other which do not cross each other students okay now in this figure which are closed curves tell me so it is a closed curve and it is a open curve there is no closing for it okay students and a closed curve and this is a closed curve and this is a open curve okay students yeah now position in a figure so suppose you play what you play tennis court so have you ever seen the tennis court so in the tennis court three types of words will, will be used so which is inside the line on the line and outside the line so if ball is uh, ball is dropped or ball is striked uh, inside the line or, or it is fall on the line or it is fall out of the line so suppose this is the court now there is a net here so if, if a ball is striked here then from this side so uh, this player has striked the ball and it has dropped here so this is inside the curve inside the line suppose the ball has touched here uh, from coming from outside then we say that it is on the line on the line it is inside the line suppose if the ball is has reached this point from this point so it becomes this outside curve line so whenever the ball from this area it will uh, drops on the outside line then we will say it is out 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 like that no then 
he will uh, he will not get any points but whenever the ball is incident on this point inside the court or inside the line then he will get a point no so that's it so similar to this also for curves also there are positions positions in a figure so for example see this diagram so what is this point a so we call this as the this is a closed curve so basically this is a simple curve why because means there there are no crossings the curve does not cross itself so it is a simple curve and again so it is a simple curve and from in, in simple curve it is a closed curve why because there is no open so in this clo simple closed curve a is a point so we call that point as the inside the interior of, or inside of the curve it is on inside of the curve so we call as the interior or inside inside point we call as the interior of the curve so all the shaded area we call it as the interior of the curve students next thing is what we have completed inside this on the line so here b is the point it is on the curve so we call it as the boundary or on the curve boundary of the curve we call it as the boundary of the curve we call the shaded area as the inside interior of the curve this is the boundary of the curve so there is another point c now we call it as the exterior or outside the curve so this is the outside point so we call it as the exterior of the curve curve so this is the exterior of the curve so this is the boundary of the curve so this is the interior of the curve so these are the three positions or three uh, three areas of a curve students okay so yeah, if you want to uh, understand it or if you want to remember it just remember the uh, tennis court basically you are more familiar with games and you like love games so just simply remember or just remember the tennis court and tennis game then you will surely uh, understand or remember about this okay students so this is about the interior curve and the interior of the curve so this is the boundary of the curve and this is the outside of the curve out exterior of the curve students so the interior of a curve together with its boundary is called its region so we call this interior plus boundary interior plus boundary together together we call those as the region region of the curve so what is the region of the curve means it is the interior of the curve uh, combined together with the boundary of the curve so interior of the curve together with boundary of the curve we call as the region students okay so that is about region so what we have completed students so we have understood what are curves means so in the mathematics curves may have straight lines also so we call simple curve as a curve which does not cross itself and we called uh, a simple curve as open curve if its initial point and final point are not touching each other and there is opening to the curve and we call simple curve as a closed curve if it is some completely closed and we we called the ins, uh, inside of a inside point of your inside region or the inside place of a curve as the interior of the curve and a point or any point on the boundary of the curve as the uh, 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 boundary of the curve uh, and if uh, there is any point on the outside the curve we call that as the exterior part and what is the region means the interior uh, interior of the curve together combined with uh, boundary of the curve we call as the region strength so that is the knowledge about curves now we'll discuss about polygons so what are polygons polygons just to see these examples just see these all diagrams and just understand so if you clearly understand there are there are line segments in these diagrams so this is the line segment these are line segments these are line segments these are line segments no so there are line segments so that what we have understood from these following polygons example so what is a polygon means so polygon it is a simple closed curve made up entirely of line segments so polygon is nothing but a simple closed curve made up entirely with uh, line segment strands okay so in the example 1 2 3 and 4 1 2 3 and 4 are also simple closed curves they are called polygons what are 1 2 3 and 4 so these are what these four are simple closed curves so these are a curves why because uh, these are curves no and uh, these are simple curves why because they are not cross each other but here it is crossed each other so it is not a uh, simple curve but these are all these five are simple curves 
uh, after this single simple curves these four curves are sim four simple curves are uh, only formed by line segments only line segments only here there is a curved area but here there are only line segments only so what are polygons polygons means nothing but simple closed curves polygons means nothing but simple closed curves formed formed by line segments only formed by line segments so if there are no line segments in a simple closed curve then it is not a polygon suppose if the simple closed for is entirely entirely simple closed and formed entirely by the line segments there are no curved surfaces there are all uh, line segments then we call it as the polygon friends okay so what are the examples for polygon is this a polygon or not it is a polygon why at first it is a curve and at second it is a simple curve why because there is no crossing each other at next it is a simple closed curve why because it is all closed curve so whenever there is a simple closed curve and it is formed entirely by line segments here all this is one line segment this is another line segment this is another line segment this is another line segment this is all these are line segments only so a simple closed curve formed by line segments we call as the polygons friends so using a math sticks we can form polygon so can you try doing a um, polygon using five match sticks so if you want so here there is a, there are five match sticks one two three four five so using five match sticks we can draw a polygon so can you draw uh, three using three match sticks can you draw a polygon yes so obviously how this is one match sticks this is another match sticks and this is another match sticks so it is a simple closed curve it is formed with match sticks so which represents the line segments only so this is the polygon can we draw a uh, can we draw a line is polygon using two match sticks it is not possible student. why because if you have two then there will be opening on another side so we can't form a polygon why because with a two match sticks we can't get a simple closed curve we will get simple open curve only but here the main criteria is simple closed curves only formed by line segments only from the polygon strands okay so now we understand what are polygons means now we will discuss about sides vertices and diagonals of a uh, po polygon strands okay the line segments forming a polygon are its sides suppose what is this this is a polygon what is this this is also polygon so the, the it is formed by line segments polygon is completely formed by line segments so we call these line segments we call these line segments as sides of a polygon so this line segment this line this line segment is side it is also another side it is also another side it is also another side so oh, so this is not a side we call this curve we don't call this curved surface as a side so basically in the polygons there will be no curved surfaces there will be line segments only so those line segments we called as the sides of the polygon strands okay next thing what are about the vertices vertices or vertex suppose take this example only so here a b c d e it is a polygon it is formed by line segments five line segments so all these we call as the sides so this is a side so if you clearly observe dc is one side bc is another side so whenever there are uh, whenever uh, both line segments are passing through one common point one common point so whenever adjacent adjacent sides are passing through one common point then we call that common point as the vertex what it is vertex vertex so sides are a b so basically in this example what are sides sides are a b b c c d d and a so all these is having five sides okay now we are going to the meeting point of a pair of sides is called its vertex so what is vertex pair of sides the meeting point of pair of sides is vertex so it is so here vertex what are the vertexes a is a vertex b is a vertex c is a vertex d is a vertex e is also vertex so at a what happens this line segment this line segment are intersecting this side this side are intersecting at this point this side this side are intersecting so meeting so not intersecting meeting 
so we call it as a vertex so in this example this is a vertex and this is the side so this point and this point vertex this point is also vertex this point is also vertex this is also vertex students like that next what about this next thing is the uh, the end points of the same side of a polygon are called end points of the same side of a polygon are called adjacent vertices here vertices e and r e and d are adjacent points so so what we have discussed about vertices and what are uh, adjacent vertices so if you so vertex is a singular word so this c is a vertex a is a vertex if you are talking about more than one vertex we will call it as the vertices so it is a vertices and a b c are the vertices so now adjacent vertices what are adjacent vertices what are adjacent vertices students so if the same side of same side of same side of polygon so end points of the end points of the same side of polygon are called adjacent vertices students suppose in this example only so this vertex and this vertex are adjacent vertices this vertex and this vertex are adjacent vertices so end points of a same side of a polygon students okay these are the vertices the, these two are the adjacent vertices these two are the adjacent vertices which means which are by side by side vertices are called adjacent vertices students so now uh, in the given example suppose in this given example e and d are e comma d are what they are adjacent vertices okay students but e and a are also adjacent vertices but a comma d are what they are not adjacent vertices not adjacent vertices then then a line segment drawing from a to d is the diagonal of the what it is diagonal of the polygon students so consider the pair of vertices which are not adjacent adjacent pair of the joints of these vertices are called the diagonals of the polygons so what are diagonal students what are diagonals the line joining line joining not non adjacent adjacent vertices non adjacent vertices are called diagonals so in the given example what are diagonals it is a diagonal why because e and d are not adjacent vertices but e and d are adjacent e and d are adjacent and why and a and b are also adjacent but a d are not adjacent so a and c are also not adjacent so these two are the diagonals and if you can these two are the diagonal students from if you consider b b and d are adjacent b and c are adjacent but b and d are not adjacent b and d are also not adjacent so this is a diagonal this is a diagonal consider c so cd cb is a adjacent vertices cd is a adjacent vertices but ca is not adjacent so it is a diagonal we have already written it but what is remaining e so c is another what it is another diagonal students okay coming to d so this is adjacent to this this is adjacent to this but these two are not adjacent but already we have written the diagonals also so these are the diagonal students okay for uh, I, I want to give for more example suppose this is a what it is this is a polygon why because it is a simple closed curve it is formed by enter with line segments so uh, a d so a d comma a b what are those those are adjacent vertices vertices so this is adjacent this is adjacent to it but c is not adjacent vertices so a line joining a to c is a diagonal coming to d so for d a is adjacent vertices c is also adjacent vertices but b is not a adjacent vertices so where if you draw a line to a non-adjacent uh, vertex it gives a 
diagonal. So these two are so AC and BD are diagonals. AC and BD are diagonal strands. Okay. Considering C from C B is uh, adjacent vertices. B is also adjacent vertices. But C and E are not adjacent vertices. A line drawn from C to A is a diagonal. So A, C, A to C and C to A means the same. No. So we have already drawn the diagonal strands. So this is about the diagonals. So we have no, uh, we have understand what is a polygon and what is a sides of a polygon, what are the vertex of a polygon and what are the diagonals of a polygon students. That's it students, we have understood about it. So there is an example for you. We have to draw a polygon like this A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. So all these are the vertices. How many which is 1, 2, 3, 4, so A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. So we have to draw a, po a polygon whose name is like that. So which means it uh, on name all the sides. So all these are the vertices of a polygon. So how many vertices we are having? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So it is having 8 vertices students. Then how you will draw? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. No, we have written 8 vertices. No, this is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. No, okay, students. So, how we can draw a polygon? A polygon is a simple closed curve with line segments. Okay, so its sides has line segments. So, we have to draw a straight line. We have to draw a straight line, we have to draw a straight line, straight line, straight line, straight line, straight line, straight line. So after connecting all with the uh, line segments, we are getting a closed curve and which is a simple also. Which why? Because it is not crossing each other. So this is a simple, uh, this is a polygon. Polygon. It is a simple closed curve and it is formed entirely with line segments. So A, B, C, D, all these are the vertices. What are the sides here? Sides are A, B is a side. B C is a side, C D is a side, D E is a side, F is a side, F G is a side, G H is a side, H A is a side. So all these are the sides of the polygon strands. Now what are the vertices we know? So what are the adjacent vertices? For this, these two are the adjacent vertices. For this, these two are the adjacent vertices. Then what are the non-adjacent uh, vertices? Then what are the diagonals? Now we are finding out the diagonals. So suppose start at A. So for A, what are the adjacent vertices? This is adjacent and this is adjacent. But this is not adjacent. So you can draw it. This is one diagonal. So similarly, so this is also not adjacent. So this is also another diagonal. This is also not diagonal. It is also another. So it is also not adjacent. It is also another diagonal. So it is also not adjacent. So it is also another diagonal. It is also not adjacent. So it is also another diagonal. So we have completed all the diagonals from A. Now we'll come to B. So for B, A and C are adjacent. So remaining all are not adjacent. So from B to D, we can draw diagonals. From B to E, we can draw diagonals. From B to F, we can draw uh, diagonals. From B to G, we can draw. From B to H also, we can draw. Why? Because it is also not adjacent. Coming to C. So coming to C, B and D are adjacent. And from B, C and B are. So we can draw for other. So there is already diagonal from C to A. So we have to draw it from C to F, E, C to F and C to G and c to h now coming to d so both these are the adjacent and remaining are a b all these are remaining so there is already diagonal to b there is already diagonal to a now here you should have to draw, draw diagonal to f so another diagonal is to g another diagonal is to h so we have completed d now coming to e so what are the adjacent vertices D and F are adjacent. So uh, skipping these two things, we have to draw vertices for all other adjacent vertices, all other non-adjacent vertices. But from E to C, there is already diagonal. From E to B, also there is already diagonal. From E to A, also there is already diagonal. But from E to A, H, there is no diagonal. So we have to draw the diagonal. From E to G, also there is no diagonal. We have to draw it. So we have completed this also. Coming to F. So from this point, G and D are what are those? They are adjacent. So all these are non-adjacent vertices. So to all these adjacent vertices, you have to draw diagonals. So 
from this point to this point there is already a diagonal so this from to b to, to b also there is no for c for d also there are diagonals but for y h there is no diagonal so we are going to draw a diagonal from f to h coming to g h and f are adjacent pairs and what are the remaining things g a b c d e so but if you observe there is already diagonals to a and to b and to c and to d and d and to e so we know we need not to draw any other more triangle coming to h a and g are adjacent so we have to draw diagonals to not adjacent points which wait is s which means b c d e f and for, but you if you clearly observe there are already diagonals from h to b h to c h to d h t e h to f so no need to write another more diagonals so how many diagonals there are so many diagonals now so this is the homework for you uh, count uh, count and draw write what are the diagonals in this uh, a b c d e f polygon students okay that's it students so we have completed our discussion about uh, polygons also students now we will discuss about angles angles so what are angles what are angles so angles are made when corners are formed so where there are corners there will be angles so suppose this is a box and uh, what it is and p q r a is a lid of the box is a lid of the box students so and if you clearly observe or if you extend a p and a d if you extend a p and a d line segments as rays as rays what happened so these both uh, line segments or the rays a p and a d are coming from one point a so at that point these two lines make some angle make some angle so the edges a d of the box and a p of the door can be imagined as two rays a d and a p so we can imagine this as the two rest ones so these two rows have a common initial point so these two are having common initial point of a so the two rays here together are set to form an angle so these two rays so these two rays are forming an angle forming an angle at what at their initial point at their initial at initial point that is a students at their initial point that is a they are forming a angle so that is like that students this is the a this is the a p line and this is the ad line students okay this is the ap line and this is the ad line students okay so this is the one this is the one ray and this is the another ray students so the angle between these two rays so there will be it is subtracting some angle at this point between these two rays so we call it as the angle we represent angle by a angle by a curve i will write we represent how you will represent there is an angle means we represent angle by angle by a curve by a curve at initial or common point common point okay students so this is the angle students so now suppose if it is the diagram E, it is the point Q it is the point O so this O point is the common point to both these rays and both these rays what they will do they will form an angle at their common point so we will represent the angle by a curve like this students so this is the angle so sometimes this is the angle so how you will represent the write the angle so we will represent the angle by letter like this or it is not like symbol like this and the angle at O is represented by P O Q but it is p o q or simply by angle at o questions we will represent it in two ways one is at angle o or another way is angle p o p or p o q but what is the problem is it is the better way to represent but it is not the better way why because means see this example see this example so here is the point p here is the a here is the b here is the c so these two rays are coming from one point so they uh, these two rays will make some angle at this point 
and these two rays are also coming from this point so these two rays also as a form that's a angle and these two rays also coming from this point these two rays also coming uh, have substance and angle at the center then there are three angles now then how we will represent the three angles definitely if you just write the angle p then which is angle p whether the angle is uh, between a p and uh, b p or whether the angle is between b p and c p or whether the angle is between a p and c p so which is the angle p means you are representing so there will be confusion so for that how you will rep represent means that is uh, angle p sorry apb apb is one angle which is the smaller angle represented by single dot and angle apc so this is the big angle so angle a this is the angle apc p a c this is the smaller angle this is a this b this is p p like that so next thing is angle b p c so if you represent it like that if you represent in this way you can clearly know the what is the angle what are there are you can clearly distinguish between the angles students okay so this is the angle p a p b so this is the angle so this is the whole angle this is the, the another small angle so in this way we have to represent the angle students okay so in specifying the angle the vertex is always written as the middle letter so what is the one what is the thing you have to remember is in the representing the uh, angle you have to write the common point or the vertex common point or the vertex in the middle here you have written p p p so that p is the vertex that p is the where the angle is subtended that p is the common point so that you have to retain the middle okay students so in this way you can find uh, angle represent angle students so 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 suppose this is b this is c this is a students then the area which is common to the which is common to this area this area we call it as the interior so interior of ang interior okay students so this is the interior area this is the exterior area this is the exterior area students so we call this as the interior area so which is in between the uh, ang between the two rays which subtending some angle we call it as the interior so all this is the exterior students okay like that and uh, uh, here there is some example like this students there is a point p there is a point r so here q is substituting some angle and uh, it is a ray pqr is a uh, qp is a ray and qr is a ray it is substituting some angle so there are two points one is yes and one is x so x is which point which is interior s is on boundary so s is on the boundary now it is boundary point x is in the interior now so we call it as the interior so z is so basically if there is another point also z so z is not interior or exterior 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 of the angle exterior of the angle interior of the angle students okay so thus the angle also has three associated parts one is interior of the angle and boundary of the angle exterior of the angle exterior angle so these are the two these are the three things students okay uh, and the space between uh, the space between these two rays is not fixed students why because if it is a ray no it can extend it so if it goes on extending what happened it is also goes on extending so here the area will be increased so it goes on extending so the area again will be increasing so that is the thing students the area is not fixed between the uh, angles bit on the angle students okay that's it is student that is about angles triangles what are triangles so triangle is nothing but a it is a polygon with three sides it is a polygon with three sides friends okay so what is a polygon we know that polygon is a simple closed curve and if it, that simple closed curve is completely formed with a line segments we call that is a polygon so polygon with three sides we call it as the triangle so polygon is simple closed curve with three line segments three line segments so this is a polygon students we call this polygon as the 
triangle should end. So this point, this this A comma B comma C are the vertices. In this we call this. So we call this triangle ABC. So we represent it just as a triangle symbol ABC. So this is the way of representation triangle students. In the case of mathematics if, or in the physics, if you want to uh, represent uh, triangle ABC means just you have to write this symbol and you have to write the vertices. No need to write triangle like that English word students. So this is the way of representing triangle ABC. So in this tri triangle ABC, what are vertices? So vertices are A comma B comma C. So all these are the vertices students. All these are the vertices of the triangle, or the uh, we call vertices is endpoints of the same side of polygon. Now we call those as the uh, endpoints as the vertices students. Okay, these are the vertices. And what are the sides? What are the sides? That is AB. This is the one line segment. This is the one side. And BC. It is another uh, line segment. It is another side. And CA. It is another line segment. It is another side. So these are the sides of the uh, triangle students okay what about the angles is there any angles yes students there are angles no there are angle angle a b c so which is the angle at this point comma angle uh, b c a so which is the uh, so in the case of written writing angle the middle point represents the the middle point or the middle letter represents the where the angle is so here middle point is c so the angle is here students so the angle is between the two rays which is bc and ca so the middle point is the common point and where the angle is subtended so we have to take care about writing angles in this form and you have to uh, mentioning in the geometry like this students and how you will write the angle at a that is if you want to write the angle at a you have to put this letter at the middle and you have to write the what are the two rays in it so ca is a one ray so c to a is a one ray so what is the another rank which is substituting that angle that is ba or ab both are same no that is another ray so there is a also written so you have to write b so in this way you have to represent the angle students okay so these are the three angles so the triangle is having three angles three sides three vertices students okay so this triangle is also have uh, has exterior and interior students okay so if in this figure what is this p so this is the interior of triangle interior region of triangle so this point is as the exterior of the triangle so this is on the triangle on the triangle students okay so basically in the finalizing what is the triangle what triangle is having is it is having so the triangle is having three sides three vertices and three angles so basically sides triangle having three sides three vertices three angles so okay students yeah that's it so that is the all the knowledge about the triangle students okay so we have discussed about triangles now we will discuss about quadrilaterals what are those quadrilaterals so quadrilateral is what quadrilateral is also a polygon students quadrilateral is also a polygon but what is the thing is here the polygon with four line segments or the four line segments four sides so this is the quadrilateral with four sides what is the tri triangle triangle is a polygon with three sides quadrilateral is the uh, polygon with four sections in the figure this is the quadrilateral so we can write it as a a b c d so this is the quadrilateral students so uh, so what are the vertices students here what are the vertices vertices are a comma b comma c comma d so all these are the vertices students okay and what are the sides students you will get four sides now a b is a side b c is a side c d is a side and uh, d a is a another side okay students and what are the angle students here we, we are having four angles now angle c that angle angle at a angle at b angle at c angle at d i have to write here so it will so what are the angle students we have to represent angle if you want to represent this angle you have to represent it in the middle so what are the two rays this is the one ray this is the another ray so d a b 
वन एंगल वट इज द नेक्स्ट एंगल दट इज द बी एंगल सो ए सी बी सी सो एंगल ए बी सी नेक्स्ट एंगल दट इज सी सो बी सी सी डी सो एंगल बी सी डी वट इज द नेक्स्ट एंगल दट इज एंगल सो सी डी डी ए दट इज एंगल सी डी ए दिस इज द वे ऑफ रिप्रेजेंटिंग एंगल स्टूडेंट्स सो सिमिलर टू ट्राइंगल्स इट इज ऑल्सो इंटीरियर एक्सटीरियर ऑन द ऑन इंटीरियर ऑफ द क्वार्टर लेटर एक्सटीरियर ऑफ द क्वार्टर लेटर ऑन द बाउंड्री ऑफ द क्वार्टर लेटर स्टूडेंट्स सो फाइनली वाट इज द क्वार्टर लेटर मीन्स वाट इज द क्वार्टर लेटर इट इज ए पॉलीगॉन सो इट इज ए पॉलीगॉन विथ फोर साइड और फोर लाइन सेगमेंट्स पॉलीगॉन विथ फोर लाइन सेगमेंट्स इज द वन थिंग यू हेव टू रिमेंबर स्टूडेंट्स नेक्स्ट थिंग इट इज हैविंग फोर वेटिसेस सिमिलर टू ट्राइंगल इट इज हैविंग थ्री वेटिसेस इट इज हैविंग फोर साइड्स सिमिलर टू ट्राइंगल इट इज हैविंग थ्री साइड्स इट इज हैविंग फोर एंगल सिमिलर टू ट्राइंगल इट इज हैविंग थ्री एंगल्स सो दिस इज द अबाउट द क्वार्टर लेटर स्टूडेंट्स ओके सो दिस इज ए क्वार्टर लेटर पी क्यू आर एस इज दिस ए क्वार्टर लेटर पी क्यू आर एस नॉट इट इज ए क्वार्टर लेटर पी एस क्यू आर सो वी हैव वाइल राइटिंग द नेम यू हैव टू राइट If you start from here, you have to follow either whether, whether this route or this route. So don't try, uh, don't write uh, P after this and this, this like that. It will not be quarter letter. So P S R Q. This is the quarter letter of P Q P S R Q. This is not the quarter letter of P Q R S students. Okay. So in this quarter letter, so what are edges and sides? We have to write this also now. In this quarter letter, what are edges and sides? So A, B, and A, D are edges and sides. So edges and sides will have common vertex. Okay, students. So edges and sides are A, B, or A, D are edges and sides. And uh, what are the uh, edges and sides, students? Okay. And uh, B, C, D, C is also edges and sides. These two are also edges and sides. Pair of edges and sides. Then what are opposite sides, students? Pair of opposite sides. One pair of opposite sides are what? This is AB, which is opposite to CD. Now, so the sides which are not adjacent, we call as are the opposite. So AB comma CD. So this pair of AB comma BC CD are opposite sides. What are the another pair of opposite sides? That is AD and BC. AD and BC. So AD is a side and A B is adjacent side to this. D C is also adjacent side to this, but B C is not adjacent side to this A D. So we call B C as the uh, uh, opposite side to A D strand. So that's why A D comma B C are one pair of opposite sides, and A B comma uh, C D are another pair of opposite sides. And what what is the thing about uh, adjacent sides? A B and A D are the one pair of adjacent sides, and B C and C D are the another pair of edge sensors. We can write A B and B C as the another pair of edge sensors. We can write D C and D A as the another pair of edge sensors. We can write four pairs of edge sensors, students. Okay, four pairs. I want to write all those. No, I want to write all those sides. Okay, students. What are the another pair of edge sensors? We have written A B and A D. So we have to written A B and B C. A B comma B C. So this pair of uh, edge, these are the pair of edge sensors. Next thing is B C C D. We have written uh, this pair of edge sensors. Next thing is C D D A. So C D comma D A. So this is another pair of edge sensors. So we are getting four pair of edge sensors and we are getting two pair of opposite sides in a quadrilateral strands. Okay, that's it, strands. So ang so there are uh, adjacent angles and uh, Opposite angles too. So, what are the adjacent angles here? Adjacent angles. So, angles which are side by side are called adjacent angles. So, these two are the adjacent angles. So, angle A. Simply, if you want to represent, you can also represent like angle A comma angle B are uh, adjacent angles. Uh, this one pair. Or what is the another pair? The another pair is angle B and angle C also uh, adjacent. So, angle B and angle C are also adjacent. So, what is the another pair? That is angle C and angle D are also adjacent so now what are the another pair of adjacent sides that is the angle d and angle a also adjacent so we are having four adjacent four pairs of again four pairs of adjacent angles what about the opposite angles in this case also we are having uh, opposite angles two pairs of opposite angles two pairs of opposite angles what are those so a and b so 
B is adjacent to A, C, D is adjacent to A, but C is not adjacent to A, so then C is the opposite to A. So angle A, comma angle C are what? They are opposite angles. Next another pair is angle B and angle D. And angle D are the opposite angle strengths. Opposite angle strengths. So these two are opposite, these two are opposite. Okay. These two are adjacent. So we are having two pairs of opposite angles and four pairs of adjacent angles and we are having four pairs of adjacent sides and four pair and two pairs of opposite side strength so this is the whole knowledge about quadrilateral students next thing is about the circle strengths so con coming to circles it is not a polygon polygon but a simple closed curve what it is it is a simple closed curve so it is a simple closed curve strength. So we are very familiar with the circle strength. So why? Because tires they are in the circular shape, circle shape, and bangles they are in the circle shape, and coins they are in the circle shapes. If you see so many uh, uh, so many things around us are in the shape of circle, they are in the shape of circle strength. So we have to uh, know about these circle strengths. So this is a circle strength so here what is the circle there is a circle no here here a comma p comma b comma n are all the points on the circle strengths so the line segments if you clearly observe here the line segments c a from c to a so this this, this is the one line segment and c to p this is the another line segment and c to b this is the another line segment and c to m this is the another line segment if you clearly observe all these are at equal distance all these lengths are equal strengths so all these line segments are having same value same value so we call it as the radius we call this as the radius of the circle strengths radius of circle radius of the circle all these all these lengths are equal strengths and we call c as the c as center center of the line segments from c to a c to p c to b and any distance from center is same strength so we called as a, or any uh, cp or crp cb cm all as the radius of the circle strengths okay so so what is the radius strengths radius it is a line segment what it is it is a line segment connecting connecting center to center connecting center to a point point on circle on circle so in the case of radius students uh, we will call uh, radius radius suppose if you strictly talking about ca then we call it as radius but if you are talking about uh, uh, ca comma cp or the uh, radius of the circle then we call it as the radii so ca comma cp are radii of the circle why radi means it is a plural word so while talking about two radiuses we have to use radii but we are talking about single radius we are talking about a radius uh, where we are talking about cs only students ca only students so and one more thing is the distance distance from center to any point any point on circle is same or equal okay students basically the radius is equal which means the distance from center to any point on the circle so from the center to this point this point this point this point this point or from center to all the points on circle the distance is same and that same distance we call as the radius students so we have know what is the center of the circle means between the center point and we know what is the radius of the circle means next thing is about the diameter so what is the diameter students diameter diameter of the circle students so basically uh, c to uh, c to p is radius c to m is also radius from p to m what it is it is a diagonal so diameter is double of radius it's double of radius it is 
लाइन सेगमेंट फ्रॉम वन पॉइंट ऑन सर्किल वन पॉइंट ऑन सर्किल टू एनदर पॉइंट पॉइंट ऑन सर्किल तो बेसिकली इट इज लाइन सेगमेंट फ्रॉम वन पॉइंट ऑन सर्किल टू एनदर पॉइंट ऑन सर्किल पासिंग थ्रू सेंटर or we can write it as in another way also we can construct the sentence it is a line segment through center through center from one point on circle to another point of circle suppose this is the circle so this is the center so it is a line segment through center it has to pass through center from one point suppose this is the one point we can name it as p so from one point to it must be passed through center and to another point like this so pm is diameter and one more thing you have observed is suppose is that c pm pc is equal to cm okay students pc equal to cm so that we call as the radius here pm is we call as the d or small d so if you clearly observe pm is a nothing but pm bar is equal to nothing but pc plus cm now so it will represent what is the pc value that is r plus we can write it as here e equal to so diameter d is equal to pm bar that pm bar is equal to pc plus cm bar so pc is equal to r and pm is equal to r so that equal to 2r so the diameter finally diameter is equal to 2 of the radius students so diameter is equal to 2 of radius and radius is equal to d by 2 students okay so diameter is equal to 2 of the radius 2 of the radius students okay so this is about the diameter students next thing is about curd so so this is one point on the circle this is another point on the circle so there is a line segment from one point to another point on the circle without passing through center we call it as the curd students okay next thing is about curd what is a chord students chord is also a line segment line segment from one point to from one point to another point another point on circle circle suppose is a circle it is having points 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 like that so this is a chord this is a chord this is a chord this is a chord suppose a b c d so what are the chords a b is a chord a b is a chord students next thing b b d is also a chord students and d c is also a chord students a c is also a chord students and one more thing is what is the largest chord largest chord is nothing but largest chord is nothing but nothing but largest chord is the diameter so what is the largest chord is it is the diameter students so if you draw it from this point to this point this is the largest chord okay students the distance from this point to this was smaller small this point to this is all smaller this point to this also small from this distance from this point is very large so it is passing through center now so largest chord is diameter and chord is a line segment from one point on the uh, from one point to another point students okay that is about chord next thing is an arc is a portion of cycle circle students okay this is an arc students some portion of circle we called as the arc so pq as the arc some portion of the circle we called as the arc we are going to write arc what is a arc arc is nothing but some portion some portion of circle we call some portion of circle suppose this is the circle this is the center and this to this we pop some this is a point p and this is a point a then we call pa pa is arc this is a some part we can this is another some part suppose there is a sorry there is a b and there is a c 
so these two points so this is also arc so bc is also a arc this means arc students and uh, what is a sector sector suppose if there is a pa if a arc which is uh, the end points are covered by two radius two radius then we call it as a sector we call it as a sector we call it as a sector students so arc with two radius arc with two radius two radi then what is segment suppose there is a curve so this is a point b this is the point c no so this is an what this is an arc and there is a chord no there is a chord so we call it as the segment what it is arc with chord arc with chord we call as the segment friends so this is the segment this shaded area is called as segment so this is the arc here bc is the arc and bc is the there is bc chord also so this is the segment here friends so that is segment and the distance around a circle is called circumference this is segment then what is about circumference So distance around distance around the circle. The total distance of the circle we call as the circumference distance. Okay. Suppose suppose with a thread or with a thread. Suppose this is a thread. No. with a thread what we have drawn with a thread you have uh, making a circle with a thread you have make in a circle like this this is the thread using a thread you have make it a circle then the distance of the thread is called the circumference the distance of the thread we call as circle fans why because if you calculate the distance from one end to if you calculate all the distance we call the distance a circumference students okay so that is about the circle students now we are going to see summary of the whole chapter what is the summary okay students without wasting time we are going to see the summary of the whole chapter students so this is basic geometrical ideas is a chapter in the max geometry is a, it is a, uh, it is from a geometron we uh, geometron which is a greek word geo means earth and metron means to measure students so points so if there is a dot we represent we call the dot as a point students okay we will represent with some uh, alphabet students so the tip of a compass is a point the sharpened end of a pencil is also a point students then what is a line segment if there are two points the line joining the two uh, points is called as the line segment students okay so line segment is a straight line like a straight line students then what is a line what is a then if the both um, if the line if the line segment is extended on both sides on both points if the line segment is extended from this point on this side and the line segment is extended from this point to this side then we call this as the line strands so we whether we can draw the whole line we can't draw why because means line seg line will goes on extending 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 to this side and this side so we can't draw the complete line so for that reason we just represent the line with two arrow head so that it what it does it mean is it goes on extending it goes on extending so we call this as the line so this is the line it has boundaries it has ended there the points are the end points but for line there is no end points for line segment there are end points but for line there will be no end points friends while representing line line we will represent ab on the top you have to draw a line segment and a two arrows but for line segment you have to draw like this only students okay and we will name line segments so next what is intersecting lines what are intersecting lines means so there are two lines if suppose the two lines are passing through one common point then we call that two uh, lines are intersecting intersecting lines then what about parallel lines suppose if two lines are not intersecting at all then we call those as the parallel line students okay suppose if you take a table 
the both if you uh, ab is a line segment if you extend this line segment as a line and if you extend this bc uh, line both adjacent sides or the adjacent sides as the line so what they will do they will intersect so this is they will intersect at this point so we call this point as the intersection point and ab and bc as the intersecting lines but if you consider the ab side line segment if you extend this line and you consider the cd side and extend this line so these two ab and cd will not intersect at any point so we call this ab line and cd line as the parallel line strands so ab and b c d are the parallel lines lines which do not intersect are parallel lines next thing then what is the ray strands ray ray basically line segment both ends are both the bo uh, both sides we are have end points for line there will no end points but ray there will be an end point and we call that as the starting point and uh, one at one side and to another point there will be no and the end point it will goes on increasing so we'll represent ray as like it so ray has a starting point and on the another side it will goes on increasing line segment has both end points line has no end points we'll representing like this trends okay and what are the examples of parallel lines are railway track this line this line these two tracks are the uh, parallel lines scale this side and this side are the parallel lines examples of parallel lines what is the ray the light source light from sun it is starting here it is goes on like that light from start is started here it goes on like that light from lighthouse started here it goes on increasing so this is the examples of rays that's why we call this light rays next thing is students La, it is a ray ray is, ray is a portion of the line starts at one end goes on endless so ray, ray is a portion of line strands okay next thing about curves strands what are curves means so curves in normal normal generally curves uh, will does not have straight lines but in mathematics curve may have straight line so without uh, having any proper order without lifting the pen on the paper uh, and without crossing uh, we can draw any curve strands okay without using ruler and without using any uh, uh, without lifting the pen from the paper we can curves like this so anything it does not have any any proper order so basically what are simple curve means if the curve does not cross itself so it is crossing itself so it is not a simple curve but here they are not crossing itself so these are simple curves students in the case of simple curves there are open curves there are closed curves what are open curves there, if there is a opening the initial point and final point does not uh, come to the same point then we call it as the open curve and if there is a closed curve means if the initial point and in final point is the same there is uh, there is no opening we call that as the uh, closed curve strands so similar to the uh, so these simple curves has uh, this in some region so any point on inside the uh, curve we called as the interior of the region or an interior of the curve any point on the boundary of the curve we so call that as a boundary of the curve any point on the uh, outside of the curve, uh, curve we call that it as the outbound exterior of the curve strands so what are polygons polygons are nothing but polygons are the simple closed curves uh, entirely formed by line segments only so polygons will be formed by line segments only those are simple closed curves so these are the examples of simple closed curves friends okay and what are the signs the line segments we call as the sides of the polygon and the whenever the two line segments intersect we call that as the vertex so this is the vertex this is the vertex this is the vertex okay students and what are the a diagonals so the opposite uh, opposite uh, vertices or uh, uh, diagonals are nothing but the line segment line joining the non adjacent vertices are called diagonals so here ab and ad are the adjacent vertices but ac is not adjacent vertices so ac is a diagonal okay students diagonals are nothing but the lines joining the non adjacent vertices okay students that is about diagonals next thing is the about the angles so angles so angles uh, angle so ap in this figure angles are formed by two rays if the two rays are coming from one common point the two rays will subtend an angle at that common point so this is ap is one ray it is another ray so uh, they are coming from one common point so there it will subtend an angle at a so we represent angle by a curve like this okay students and how we will represent angle means basically by uh, angle p o q like that if you want to represent the angle at o then you have to represent angle p o q so middle letter represents the angle or simply by angle o but this is a better representation if there are so many angles at one common point there will be confusion okay students that is about angles next thing is about 
similar to the uh, polygons the, if the point is in, inside the angle then we call it as the interior angle if the point is on the line of the uh, line segment or the ray we call it as the boundary uh, point on the boundary if there is any point on the uh, outside of the rays we call it as the exterior angle or not exterior angle exterior to the angle next about the triangles triangles are nothing but the polygons with three three sides friends so triangles having three vertices triangles having three sides triangles having three angles students okay and similar to it uh, if a point is inside the triangle we call it as the interior and if a point is outside the triangle we call it as the exterior of the triangle the point is the exterior of the triangle and that is the exterior region like that what is about quadrilaterals quadrilaterals are nothing but polygons with four sides students so it has four vertices it has four sides it has four angles students okay then here also there will be in the for a quadrilateral there will be adjacent sides so four pair of adjacent sides are there and opposite sides so there are two pairs of opposite sides and what about adjacent angles there are four pairs of opposite adjacent angles and two pair of opposite angles in quadrilateral strands next thing about circle strand circle it is not a polygon but it is a simple closed curve strands circle has a center and the distance from center to any point on the circle is is equal strands that distance we call as the radius so radius is a line segment connecting center to any point on the circle strands then diameter so diameter is nothing but the line segment uh, passing through line segment passing through the center from one point on the circle to another point on the circle students and diameter is equal to 2 into radius d equal to 2 r students and chord chord is a line segment from one point to another point it may or may not be passes through dia center students so what is the largest chord is the largest chord is the diameter which means the line segment which is passing from center next thing is what students we have discussed about line segment also next thing is about sector so what is a sector if some portion if there is arc next thing is arc what is arc means if there is take some portion of the circle we call that portion as a arc students if there is an arc and two ray it is covered by two radius like that then we call this portion as a sector students then what is a what is a segment segment means if there is an arc and there is a chord the area combined by arc and chord we call as the segment students and what is the circumference circumference is nothing but the total distance of the uh, circle distance of the circle is called as the circumfer uh, circumference students that's it students our summary is also completed so if you like the video don't forget to subscribe shrinal academy youtube channel uh, also follow on instagram and join our telegram channels have a nice day keep smiling bye bye